You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and we are so glad that you're with us today. We appreciate you taking a few minutes of your very busy day, I'm sure, to be here with us for this, which is episode number 1037. And I do want to just ask you guys, because I know there's a lot of you out there that have questions, and for whatever reason, believe it or not, our question bank is down a little bit. And I think what happens is people think somebody else will ask a question, or they won't get to my question, or I don't like the way I sound, or, 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 and I just want to encourage you to uh, take the time, get your question in, we'd love to hear from you, and we can guarantee you that whatever you're thinking, somebody else is thinking as well, they're just not willing, for whatever reason, to call in and leave their questions, so go to AskDroneU.com and let us know what's on your mind, we really want to hear from you. Definitely want to, <clears throat> want to hear from you. Business questions. You know, people have been saying, oh, you've been doing so many mapping questions. Well, if you've got a specific cinematography, videography question, we want to hear it. So uh, bring it on. Couldn't agree more. Um, also want to say a special thank you to Pix4D. The user conference is coming up. It's October 2nd through 4th in Denver, Colorado. Also want to thank Pix4D for making us uh, a university license user, so our trainings run a little bit smoother now. And I really appreciate that, so thank you very much. Um, and it's actually very relevant considering today's question is regarding the Phantom 4 RTK, talking about some of the nuances, some of the training, how it works. So very interested. In fact, I uh, just had On Good on the show talking mm -hmm. about that hard question that directly relates to the P4 RTK. So let's go ahead and hear it and hope you guys enjoy the show. Again, if you've got a question, just go ahead and ask it. If you think it's business related, we really want to hear it. Good day, Paul and Rob. This is Johnny from San Diego. Question for you. I'm using the Phantom 4 RTK drone, and I've been using it for the past several months, and I'm pretty impressed with the output that I'm seeing from that drone versus from the Phantom 4 2.0 regarding the orthomosaic imagery from that contour lines, how well it looks. So my question for you is in the future in your mapping courses, are you planning to give training on the new drone? Thank you, enjoy your week, and thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you, Johnny, appreciate it. Johnny uh, attended our San Diego mapping class and uh, very, very grateful that he was there. Fly in too. Yeah, actually, uh, is now the time to announce that or is it too soon? I don't think it's too soon. We've uh, put the money down. The money is down. And uh, we spent a lot of money to get. Vito ain't giving it back, I assure you. <laughs> <laughs> Vito. <laughs> oh, Vito. There is nothing like a big Polish guy to tell you what's going on. Well, he tells you what's up. Oh, yeah. If you ever, if you ever have a problem with him, just say, Dobre dele. I'm not going to repeat what that means. All right. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, so okay, let's talk about this really quick. Are we going to offer training on the P4RTK? The answer is yes. But we have waited. Why have we waited? Because depending on the processing software that you're using, a lot of users are still getting um, their elevation values screwed up. And whether it's because of how the P4 RTK actually measures its elevation, if it's from takeoff height or if it's actually from the NAV88 height or if it's from the geoid height, we really don't know. And that has actually changed from one Phantom to another and it's changed over firmware upgrades. So that being said, one of the biggest issues, and this really only focuses on Americans, everyone outside of America doesn't have this issue, we're very unique to this issue, which is there's still this problem with essentially interpreting the image datums correctly. So this is also why I think that the uh, propellers cloud-based system in working with one arrow point and the P4RTK may actually be one of the most valuable systems, especially for construction asset managers, because their ability to do timelines um, in the cloud and the ability to white label the service and send it to clients and have clients manipulate the data in the way that they want is extremely powerful. But the more powerful part here for the DSP, Rob, 
is all about the workflow because the workflow is actually a little bit more complex if you're not using Propeller, if you're using Capture Reality, if you're using Pix4D, Metashape, um, Drone to Map. You know, there's a lot of increased workflow when you're using the P4RTK, which in my eyes doesn't really make it worth the extra money. Hmm. Um, in fact, I'm hoping to buy someone's used P4RTK because I don't even want the pole. The pole's useless. I don't want it. No, thank you. Get get out of here! Um, like literally, <laughs> waste Keep your of damn money. Pole. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yes, that's one way to put it, Rob. Uh, <laughs> um, but we feel very strongly about that poll. Well, you know, it's uh, not the most useful. We actually did a new show on that this morning, which went out last week. If you're listening to this. Um, and talking about that, and uh, it's just you know it's just not there yet. With the new yeah. SDK remote, we can yes finally use third party application and really have a lot more control over uh, the datums, the metadata, and how the image capture and how we do it. Um, but with that said, the MSL geoid error is still a big issue with the P4RTK and the workflow as a whole because, for example, I have to typically take those photos out of the RTK, change the datum in one way or another, whether it's uh, Trimble's Pathfinder system or Leica's system uh, or a corrections network. There's still just so much work that goes into it that unless you're in an area just absolutely drenched with a cores network and great cellular service, it just the value isn't there for me yet. Now, I do want to really dive deep on construction and offer an extra day of the mapping class next year. Uh, in fact, I already have plans to do that. When we plan out our spring tour, mm -hmm. I intend to offer an extra day to literally offer the P4RTK training cool. because it's extremely specific. But what a lot of people don't understand is that you're not just buying the P4RTK. You've got to also have network access to the NTRIP network. In addition, I can't stand it when people say this, but all the time people are like, you need a P4P RTK and trip network and you're good, nothing else. That's not true. You need at least a ground control point. And we're still finding that a lot of people are still just using the traditional method of GCPs and a phantom because the low, low, low cost of getting arrow points or renting them. And now drone U members can rent high military grade GNSS GPS receivers for 200 bucks a day and a couple hundred bucks on some landing pads. Yep. And, and they're organized and you don't need to spend eight grand on a P4 RTK. Now, that being said, you know, I'll go back to where the value is. If you're utilizing a system like Propeller, which corrects the data on the back end autonomously, mm. meaning that with the P4 P RTK, you're not getting the data off the drone, sending it to Pathfinder, getting it back, inputting it into whatever processor, then, you know, going from there, um, a lot of people are still just, you know, hey, I'm, uh, I'm mapping with a regular Phantom. I'm using regular GCPs. I can change the input coordinate system and I get a match every time. I don't have an elevation mismatch because of, again, the MSL geoid error. And this is something we talked about with Ongood on the show. You know, like Pix4D is expecting to have an update to roll out to automatically essentially work with that imagery so that there's not any extra workflow. But they're wow. saying that that's not going to be until the next release. So with that said, I think in our leadership and our role of the, the navigation, the direction that we're going with our business and what we're telling other DSPs, I thought it was a more intelligent decision, Rob, to lead people and continue to lead people down the phantom track because you can still create extremely accurate maps mm -hmm. with just a phantom and regular GNSS, GNSS GPS. Right. Um, and typically the workflow is more seamless, repeatable and scalable with that. But if you're on a construction site and you're utilizing like propeller service, wow, that's so a really beat. powerful service. Yeah. So specifically with Johnny and his question and, and what he said in that question, he said he's really liking the orthos from it, right? So, But he's not real worried about accuracy if that's what he's talking about, I presume. Well, no, I mean, if he's doing orthos, he's taking 2D linear measurements. Okay. So, I mean, an ortho mosaic is really imagery stitched and scaled to the ground to ha to be somewhat accurate. Right. So now the way that that can be done, it, it, man, there's so many variables on that. I'm not going down that rabbit hole. Ortho mosaics are very powerful. But based on everything that you're saying, I've uh, no offense to Johnny, but it's pretty sophisticated, deep stuff, and, and yet he seems to be doing fine with, uh, with the way he 
he's doing it using sure. the RTK. Yeah, sure. So basically, not trying to dog him either. I think. No, no, that, I know you're Johnny's not. Johnny's a know very not. smart individual. So yeah, no, definitely. Um, but you know, for like I said, Rob, it really comes down to who are you working for and what are the deliverables. Yeah. Because if you're working in construction, you're working with propeller. I think that is the singular system that works really well with the P4 RTK. Uh, DJI still won't give me access to Terra, so I have no idea how that how that's going down. But mm. haven't really heard anyone say amazing things about it yet either so you really don't hear it talked about much at all at all yeah at all actually so you know if if, if you're doing other mapping with it um, for example ortho mosaic mapping man really depends on what type of ortho he's doing because that's such a loaded question right yeah. if I'm in disaster relief I don't need GCPs I don't need a P4 RTK send the drone up map the thing exactly export the ortho it's not about you know measurements it's more about logistics safety rescue navigation right that's exactly right and that's kind of what i was getting at is that he might be doing it in a, in, with a, a deliverable or a, an end use that doesn't require as much accuracy sure and that's a solid point again that goes back to the three phantoms sitting in front of us that can all do that job again if it doesn't need to be you know quote unquote accurate right so Interesting. anyway hmm. i think uh i think we actually did a, a very good job at answering that question just quickly quickly recap yes we plan on adding an extra day for our mapping class. We include on uh, planning uh, to work with Pix40's new system and also showcase another system as there is a certain system that really um, expedites deliverables. And I think that that's an important thing to showcase in the class. Also, just a recap for everyone who has taken the in-person mapping class, we refilmed it uh, this last weekend. Should be up, I would say, in about a month. And it's a lot more comprehensive. Also, we added seven additional courses to the comprehensive mapping course called Advanced Mapping Deliverables. And we even have our new webinar on the deep dive of GPS and understanding the workflow between arrow points and a traditional NRTK or RTK or PPP system. We really go down the rabbit <sighs> hole. And that's only $47 a month, guys. Like, think about that. It's literally 40 hours of class. You're paying 60 cents for that. Okay, now if we take now into account your business class, which is another 40 hours, or if we take into account 29 other classes, you are literally paying pennies on the dollar per hour for educational content that goes deeper than anyone else in the industry. And Vic's aerial photography class that's about to come out, holy cow. The value of being a member right now is astronomical. Yeah. So and maybe the greatest value is the community of other pilots, because they're amazing. I couldn't It's agree. a great group. You know, I was just talking about that on Facebook, not to get all sobby, but I there's nowhere else I'd rather work than here because the culture that you have really been we. the leader, you <laughs> have been the leader on, um, it's, it's unreal. I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to do anything else. Like literally, I, don't either. I will never forget the moment. Please don't make uh, me. I will never forget the moment <laughs> of walking into Kitty Hawk's office and this stale, stagnant air in the room and everyone staring at a machine and like, like no one got up to say hi or like anything. And we, the same day we we're in the PIX40 office and everyone's like, Hey, what's going on? <laughs> oh, I'm talking about drones. Let's, let's go grab a beer. Like, you know, it was just vastly like, different. I would agree. I, and it was I vastly just, different. I just think about the difference in culture and it's something that my wife and I talk about all the time and no one is looking for a company with culture when they're finding a job. And if you want the key to happiness where you work, you either build the culture or you find it. And if you're a DSP, chances are you're building it. So you've got to be a really strong leader like this guy over here. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name's Rob. This is Ask Drone You.